I'm Dr. Erin McDonald, astrophysicist, writer, and science fiction science consultant. And um, today we're going to be talking about the three main types of faster than light travel that we typically see used in science fiction. Now, a quick primer on why science fiction does this. Well, our universe only lets us travel at a fixed speed. That's kind of our limit, right? Known as the speed of light. Essentially, you have our fabric of space-time, and as you're moving through it, you're limited by how fast you can go. Typically, you know, the heavier you are, the harder it is to move, and then the lighter you are, the easier it is, and then eventually you have no mass, like a light particle, and you just coast along in a straight line at a fixed speed that we call the speed of light. And this is the fastest we know anyone can move on the surface of space-time, so just move through our universe. So these main types are a gross generalization of the types of faster than light travel that we tend to see. For example, hyperdrives are like a whole other video on their own, and uh, if you want to see that, let me know. <laughs> but uh, there's sort of a weird combination between those, and we definitely get little outliers here and there, and feel free to share any that you think of um, that fit outside of these main three categories. Of these we're going to categorize kind of most plausible to least plausible in general. So first we're going to start with wormholes. Now, wormholes have been described by different scientists and mathematicians pretty much since the idea of general relativity came about in the early 20th century. The broad way of thinking about how wormholes work is that, you know, you have your surface of space-time and it might be bent, it might be folded, and traveling along the surface of it could be slow and arduous, but if it's folded in a certain way, punching a shortcut through could actually make your trip much shorter. So it's almost like a tunnel that you're burrowing through two parts of space-time. Now these are theoretically, mathematically totally possible. We've just never seen or detected any of them and we certainly don't know how to build one ourselves. In science fiction, we tend to see wormholes either be naturally occurring or artificially built. Now naturally occurring ones would be examples like the Bajoran wormhole in Star Trek Deep Space Nine, or we could have artificially generated ones like stargates or mass relays that we see in the Mass Effect series. Now, science fiction even reimagined the sort of philosophical Bifrost bridge from Norse mythology as a literal Einstein-Rosen bridge named after one of the prominent mathematical definitions of a wormhole. Next, we move into warp drives. Now, warp drives are mostly associated with Star Trek. That's the most famous example of them. And the way it works is, again, theoretically really smart. Um, like I said, you can't go faster than the speed of light on the surface of space-time. But nothing says that space-time itself can't go faster than the speed of light. I actually have a whole video for this um, associated with Star Trek that you can check out. With this concept that there's no rule saying that space-time itself can't go faster than the speed of light, the idea behind a warp drive is that you build a bubble of space-time around your ship, and then that bubble propels your ship faster than the speed of light through the universe. And it can have its own limits. There's only so fast you can go. There's only so big a bubble you can build. So if you want to exponentially increase your speed, you could build a bubble around that bubble and increase your warp factor. So that could be warp factor two. Build another bubble, warp factor three. Um, another, and you eventually get to warp factor 10, which would be all of space and time because you've hit that theoretical limit. So a common real-world warp drive is known as the Alcubierre drive, and some people might have seen examples of this. It's been in the news quite a lot lately, and it's just the idea that someone has mathematically gone through what would be required to build a warp drive and what that would mathematically look like using our rules of general relativity in space-time. Right now, the energy required to bend space-time, if we knew how to do it, is far beyond the capabilities that we have right now. We don't know how to harness it, and we don't know how to control that much energy. I believe like around the latest example of how much energy is required is about the energy equivalent of the mass of a semi-truck. And remembering that the hydrogen bomb was the energy released from about a teaspoon of matter, that's quite a lot of energy that we're gonna need, and I can see why Zephram Cochran drinks so much. Now the last main category that we look at are called jump drives. So this is the most out there example that we see um, used, primarily because of how much energy would be required, but there are lots of great examples of using this in sci-fi, and it's a pretty easy way to go faster than the speed of light. It's just practically 
we don't know quite how to get there. The idea is that I'm here, I wanna go there, I'm gonna take that location, I'm gonna bend space time so that location is right on top of me, I jump to that location, and then I let space return to normal. There are some limits with how far you can go with this, and some are practical and some are physical. The red line in Battlestar Galactica actually refers more to the statistical risk that you're taking that you might jump into a planet or a moon or a star rather than how far you could physically go, which is why we see them breaking that limit quite often. We also see jump drives in series like Dark Matter in Babylon 5 and Devil Forbid Event Horizon. And like I said, we can get combinations of these as well. Like the gates in Cowboy Bebop are kind of an artificial wormhole slash jump drive. And like I mentioned before, hyperspace is kind of like a warp drive mixed with a wormhole. But again, like a whole other video could be done on that. So that's it for the main types of faster than light travel in science fiction. Feel free to comment below, ask questions. If something I said didn't make sense, I'd be happy to do another video on it. Um, thanks for being here and we'll see you next time.